we fight to gain what we cannot take with us. It's in our nature. Hello there. Sir from 17 once again. This is my Assassin's Creed Syndicate 100% sync walkthrough. This is sequence 9. It is entitled Family Politics and we're going to be stealing a carriage. And it's one of those missions that is not necessarily that difficult, but it's a little bit out of the wheel park for some of the ones that we've been doing. And the first part is quite interesting because you have to steal it without going inside. And it wasn't the clearest of objectives when I was first doing it because I was like, Gee, can you not climb inside? Can you not touch the ground? And the first technique that I tried to do was to actually climb up and land on the carriage and ride it out, but that counts as going inside. But it turns out it just wants you to do the strategy that I've inadvertently been doing for the entire game, which is to make the horse panic by using a smoke bomb. Seems to be the, the best and most logical way of, of superseding this objective. As, as you can see right now, I'm looking around the place and there doesn't really seem to be that many interesting ways of, of egressing into where we need to be. So, I do a little scouting for the purposes of just reconnoitering what we're about to do and then there's going to be a transition coming up here where I actually do the mission because I was looking for an interesting path I was looking for something specific something just something that was going to happen that was going to definitely say you know this is the best way to do this and having assessed it just then and having rewatched it back you can tell that it's just not the most transparent and this guy comes up and I punch him in the face and I kept that in because I find that animation very satisfying and then we're gonna get on with it in a moment hopefully but this is a slightly longer video so it allows me to talk a little bit just about the Assassin's Creed and what have you no feelings to compromise yeah the there was the transition so now we're gonna go straight to business now guys but I think that the there's a lot of opinions right now that are really strong about this game and a lot of them are swaying to being negative which I think is interesting to see I don't know how much these people have played of the game for some of these opinions that they're putting out there, but when I was looking on forums and I was looking on game facts and places like that, just an overwhelming negativity towards a lot of features of the game, saying that they don't think it controls as well as Unity did, saying things along the lines of it doesn't feel like there's a lot of content in it, and some of these criticisms and some of these observations I agree with, some of them I really don't, and I always find it really curious to see how people are feeling and how they're finding the game, because a lot of the times some of the opinions are so different to my own I find it really strange to see where they're coming from with the movement I do think unity controlled better but I can't test it because it involves installing unity which is like a 50 gig game and I don't have the space on my hard drive nor the time to do it and it's just one of those things where I don't remember shouting at the game as much as I've shouted at this one just for it doing things I don't want it to do but as far as saying that the game doesn't have a lot of content I think these people just haven't figured out how to access it because there's a lot of stuff in here it's just some of it isn't very interesting a great example is the the bare knuckle boxing which is a side mission that you can do which is about as boring as it gets because the combat I when you're doing it sporadically and you're not there all the time it feels okay intermittently because you don't have time to really focus on it and, and discover how it works I spent the other night doing all of the prize fights which go on for far too long and I now know that the precision that I thought the combat had it really doesn't have and you can mash your way to success and in fact it is a better way of doing it rather than doing precise button presses because on a, on a precise button press you have the chance that the input will fail whereas if you're mashing it generally never does and I think that that is never how it should work I think it should always be the other way and it's one of the reasons that I'm quite concerned about the Street Fighter V game that's coming out because you can mash the combos and I hate being able to mash combos I think it's something that you should be heavily punished for and like in Street Fighter 4 you will never do a one link frame a one frame link sorry mashing combos because it just doesn't exist that is one sixtieth of a second that you have to time and the chance that you're going to get it via mashing is astronomically low. Like, you can't even begin to understand and... Whereas I don't think that all fighting games should be incredibly heavy, intensive execution that separate, you know, even the, the, the mildest 
happy players from the people who've put in the time, there should still be a barrier of entry there for the people who have practiced in the lab. And Street Fighter V doesn't have that. Like, I was in training mode on that game for about five minutes and I'd already done, like, fucking fierce into fierce, into fierce, into juggle, into super cancel. And it's the type of stuff that took me weeks to figure out on Street Fighter Four. <laughs> like, on Third Strike, way longer. Because the timings and things were just really, really tricky, whereas this game, immediately you, you're getting really... P and I'm not saying that this is not, like, an interesting way of doing it, because I think it is. It's just really converse to how I like to play. Like, even Marvel. If you've ever played Marvel vs. Capcom, that is a game where you watch these people do these crazy infinites and juggle people forever, and it's just, like, one touch, one kill. And then you play it, and you can't do it. Because you have to practice. Like, those people didn't become that immediately. They learned that, and they got really good at doing that, and that's why Marvel evolved this crazy game. But if you watch Marvel in its beta form, like, people thought it was going to be a slow game because nobody knew how to kill fast. Nobody knew about these infinites. Nobody knew about these crazy off-the-ground setups and all that kind of good stuff. By the way, there's no animation for people getting in the carriage, it seems. So they just stand there like a tip for a while, and then they vanish, and then they're in your car. I don't know what that is, but if it isn't ugly and messy and just not becoming of a triple A title, I don't know what it is. But this is Assassin's Creed doing what Crazy Taxi did on the Dreamcast, and Crazy Taxi did it better. However, I really do like the carriages because I think they're hilarious. There's something funny about just rocking in these carriages. I'm, I'm so in love with them at the moment. But, yeah, I have legitimate fears for, for Street Fighter V, just because... You know, I have access to the beta right now, I can play it at any time, and there are people who were literally killed to be able to do that, and I have no interest in going back and playing it. Uh, mainly because I only have four characters. I used an update file to unlock all, all the characters that should have been available, and it didn't work, so I didn't get to test out Bison, didn't get to test out Nash, or Ryu, uh, or Kami. You know, any of those characters. I didn't get to test out uh, Karen or Birdie. I only got to play with, with Vega and Ken. And there was two others, Armika and uh, Nikali, which... Like, the only character out of all of those that I'm even remotely interested in is Nash, because I think he looks cool and he might have a cool moveset. And I want to test out Ryu's parry because I, I love parrying on third strike, but aside from that, I don't have to play it, you know what I mean? It's that weird thing of, if I had Dark Souls 3 beta on lockdown right now and I could play it whenever I wanted, do you really think I'd be sat here talking on this video? <laughs> there is no chance in hell, guys. No chance in hell. I would literally be doing frame data on, on Dark Souls 3. I would be getting all the parry times, I would be getting all the attack times, I would be analysing the footage, I would be doing some crazy sick stuff because the game isn't out and that stuff is interesting and it'll be really fascinating to see how it changes when it does come out, but it's just one of those things. It's not how it works, is it? You know, you you never get what you want in life, it seems, at times. And nor should you in a lot of circumstances, but every so often it would be nice to have a victory. But I've never understood why FromSoft do betas the way they do, those network tests. Like, they call it a network test, and then they isolate it to get away from the, the association of a beta. Because a beta, to me, is or a beta, as some people say, is essentially a, an opportunity to bang on your servers and stress test your game and give us an experience of the product before it's finalised. It shouldn't be, you know, one hour here, two hours here, and then you don't get to see it. It should be a period of time where you can play it at your leisure, because I can 100% tell you, when you play these betas that are timed, they're not very fun. Because it's always on your mind. And you don't get ever get a chance to relax. Like, there are times when I was holding a piss because I wanted to play as much as I could, and nobody wants to do that. You know? I wanted to go and get something to eat or go and get a drink, but I couldn't because I had to sit down for the three hours that it was on and make sure I made the most of it because I couldn't come back. And it just, it doesn't feel great with that weight of expectations and I, I really don't enjoy it. Like the Street Fighter V one was better because it was over a period of a few days and I think that that's perfectly fine. But the fucking Dark Souls stuff, they do it so dumb. Like, I don't know why FromSoft thinks it's a good way of doing it, but it's really not. Like, they never release a demo. Why? There's all these people that are absolutely afraid of the Soul series and they've never tried the game because they don't want to waste money on something potentially they cannot play. Give them a fucking demo. 
and then they can test it for themselves and if they want to have that same opinion of this is the hardest game in the world when it's not they can have that but if you never give them the opportunity to try your game why the hell will they buy it and all of the stuff that they do to kind of gentrify it and solemnize it and like homogenize it to this average market is the stuff that hurts the fans who really want the complicated things so all they're doing is hurting a market of players that never had any intention of playing to begin with and I find it absolutely baffling and I would love to talk to that Jay Karcher guy, the community manager for FromSoft at the moment or for the Souls area of the FromSoft team, I don't exactly know what he does but every time I tweet that dude he never replies because I'm not fucking Epic Name Bro or peeve or something, I don't know. He's a busy man and, um, you know, I don't want to get in the way of his life and stuff, but every so often it would be nice to, to get some confirmation when you ask a question. But that's Twitter, isn't it? Lots of people ask me questions and I don't get the time to reply to them, so, you know, I suppose I should be a bit more accommodating. It's just one of those things, I guess. It can be difficult sometimes to contact some people, and then other times it can be really, really easy. And I'm, I'm always surprised when somebody who has quite a high profile on Twitter is so willing to reply. I think that's wonderful to see. Because they don't have to, guys. And it's one of those things where you make a choice when it comes to these kind of, you know, social medias for something that is effectively a business. You can choose to have time to yourself and you can choose to have time for other people. And I think it's very noble in some ways that people have taken the time to reply. So I think it's really nice. But this mission is, is pretty much straight up, don't take damage in the cart, and this gets a little hairy so I drop a smoke bomb there. But as long as you don't go under 50%, and you shouldn't need to, you should be fine and you should be able to get that final objective. But it's, it's an interesting mission, I'm glad it exists, and this was the first time in the game I saw the firemen. I'd never seen the, uh, the cavalry of firemen before, I thought that was cool as hell. But there's some cool features of this game. Some really, really cool features. And I still haven't gone to the World War One simulation, or World War Two simulation, whichever one it is. If they turn the game into a first-person shooter or a third-person shooter, I think that'd be really fun to see. Although the last time I played a, a first-person shooter by Ubisoft, it was that forced-in section for Splinter Cell Blacklist, and I thought it ruined it. And I do think they can do first-person shooters, they just can't do Iron Sights, as Rainbow Six Vegas taught me. So now we have to take the carriage back, which is one of those really bizarre moments where you think the mission's going to end, yet they want you to do this. And bearing in mind, this is sequence nine, so this is the final sequence of the game, and I think there's only four missions in this, and one of them is the final one, which is quite long, but then it has that hilarious last boss, which <laughs> is literally going to show you what a failed last boss looks like, because if you don't have to do what the developers intended you to do to get to the boss and fight him, easy, easy. that is a fundamental failure on, on the developer side. Like, If I can just run straight forward, regardless of the cost, and get to your whole last boss, even though there's some kind of environmental puzzle there, it wasn't designed right. And you'll notice, I have three squares of life. On this game, you can have like nine squares of life, so I have the lowest possible life you can physically get in this game. And I am going to block everything the final boss does with my face and not die so it just goes to show the balancing is way off for a game that's a challenge and the game isn't a challenge that's the universal truth like i've got a lot of people leaving comments on these videos saying like oh i have an easier way of doing this it's like dude this was my first fucking attempt that you're watching and i did it so why would we need an easier way when it's already so goddamn easy People are not going to struggle with this game, and if you do struggle with it, it's just because you're not that experienced with the series. Like, that is literally the only reason. Or, there's a really finicky requirement. For everything else, it's almost impossible to fail. It's a game that plays itself. And, I said I'd cover it, because I've never done it before, so I'm doing something different, and I'm committing to it. And I'm having a lot of fun. So thank you for watching, and you take care now.